Hey, how's everybody doing today? I'm Anthony, this is Palm Auto Prepared, and today we're gonna try something new. Now, I was doing a little bit of research this weekend, a little bit of reading around, because I like to read, and I stumbled across an article from MIT back in 2014, and it's basically saying that you can filter water using the xylem of a piece of wood. Now, the xylem is the sap wood, not the heartwood of a tree. Now, that's the, the sap wood is basically the the wood that carries the nutrients up and down where the sap travels, all that fun stuff. And their theory was this wood, a tree has evolved because it will grow next to a, a pond or a stream or whatever that's got harmful bacteria in it, but the fruit from a tree in the tree has drinkable water. So if you tap a maple tree or whatever, you can basically just drink the sap and you're fine. So the theory sound that the tree has evolved a nice way to uh, purify its own water. So that's what I wanted to try out. Now what they did was they cut a piece of sap wood, put it to a tube, ran water through it uh, with food coloring and it filtered out you know so much food coloring uh, up to, uh, I don't remember exactly the nanometer or nanoparticle but uh, I'll post the article down in the description so you can read it yourself but uh, it got me thinking it got my wheels spinning so I wanted to give it a shot so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own filter and I'm gonna see if I can filter out things like orange soda and some of my creek water to see if it actually makes you know a difference and uh, with that being said first things first we got to go find a tree so I can cut it down a little little sapling so I can cut it down and debark it so let's go ahead and do that All right, now we gotta put the wood in the tube and clamp it down. All right, now that I got the piece of sap wood in the tube with the clamp, I have to figure out how I'm gonna mount this to where I can fill it up and let it drain. Cause I don't know how long this is gonna take to drain and I'm not gonna sit here and just hold it like this. So uh, I'm gonna build me a little stand out of a piece of spare two by four and we're gonna do it that way. So hang on. All right, now as you notice, I obviously I changed my shirt. It's because it's about 95 degrees here and I sweat through my last one and I don't think you guys want to see that. So that's why I changed shirts. But got everything set up, got the stand, got the piece of wood, the xylem right here at the end. You see it? Pardon my rooster, he's a complete butthole. He just does not want to stop crowing whenever I'm outside. Got a jar to catch the stuff that uh, comes down through. And we're going to see if this thing filters an orange crush. I figure what's the best way to test a filter if we, can, if we can't filter soda. We obviously can't filter E. coli. So I'm going to go ahead and dump it in. And I don't know how long this is going to take. So I might have to cut it until it flows through. So let's see. All right. It was leaking around this. I tightened it up a lot better. We're gonna pour this right back up top and see if we can get some clean stuff out of here. And for sake of fairness, I'm gonna clean out the jar that way, you know, the remnants aren't in there, so. Nice and clean. Let's see if we get some clean fluid out of here. Let me get a little closer. Right, so we've got a good drip going on and surprisingly enough it looks pretty clean so after rinsing out the, the jar the drips that seem to follow seem to be pretty clear actually so this is taking quite a while so I'm gonna leave it out here for about an hour and some, hour and some change maybe at least until we get a good little bit in the bottom and uh, we'll determine if this is yay or nay.
All right, we are two hours into this test. And surprisingly, it looks successful. I've got one more grip coming and it looks like it's slowly starting to speed up. But you see how there's a little orange tint to that in comparison to this? <laughs> um, yeah. So it's not filtering out everything and I really didn't think it was going to, but the sheer fact that it's filtering out as much as it has is very impressive to me. And I think there might be something to this experiment. Now, one thing that I considered as I'm waiting for this was I want to think that I might have cut my piece of xylem wood a little too long. So I have another one that I made with a, a two and a half inch piece instead of a uh, five inch piece. And we're going to see if that one flows a little bit better. And we're going to use T on that one. But as of right now, there's a huge difference as a matter of fact, since it's, you know, something I could drink anyway, I'm going to taste this and see exactly how close to Orange Crush it actually tastes. It tastes like flat, stale water. There's no carbonation, there's no sweet taste to it. Actually, it tastes more like pine than anything else, so, hmm. Interesting. Let's do this last test over here. I'll probably give it half an hour and it's going to be on T and we will determine if this is a or a. Right, we are about one hour into it, and from what I'm seeing, is there a difference? You tell me. It looks like there's a big difference in terms of how much color we have here. However, the one thing I've learned from this experiment is the wood on the two and a half inch cut flows about one drop every 20 seconds. The one on the five inch is about one drop every four, four minutes and some change. So it could also be the liquid being there's more salt and sugar and whatnot in the soda versus just the tea. Now, rereading this article, it made a, a comment that the particle sizes that they used were between 70 and 500 nanometers and a coniferous piece of wood like this, like pine, can filter down to 70 nanometers. Now there are certain salts and all kinds of fun stuff that are obviously smaller than 70 nanometers. Same thing with natural, it's tea, I mean it comes from a plant. Obviously it's going to uh, move through the plant because it is a plant. So I really didn't think that part through. However, um, the fact that it's filtering anything is pretty promising. And another thing in this article I wanted to mention is the size of bacteria, more specifically E. coli, is about 200 nanometers. So if hardwood, I'm sorry, if coniferous woods, uh, porous, porous sapwoods can filter down to 70 nanometers and the bacteria is 200 nanometers, then you should be pretty safe. The drawback is it, some viruses are actually smaller than 70 nanometers down to about the size of 20 nanometers. So uh, this will not protect against all bacteria or I'm sorry, all viruses. So this was just one of those experiments that I wanted to do because I wanted to see if at all possible this was more practical than making a charcoal filter. And in my opinion, I think a charcoal filter is definitely the way to go because not only does it flow faster, it's once you actually make the charcoal, it's super easy and it's probably good for a little bit longer time as well. I can imagine this filter would, you know, this piece of wood would need to be changed out pretty quickly, uh, most likely within a day or two. Just in the amount of volume of water that be able to, you know, flow through versus the wood and charcoal. So in conclusion, I would not jump at this type of filter first, but it's very nice to know that it's possible. And from the 
experimenting I did today, uh, not only will it flow through, water does flow through, it tastes completely different than the orange soda that went through there. It tastes like pine water. And this water I haven't tasted, but obviously there's a big difference in terms of color. So uh, with all that being said, if I had to do this as part of like a life-threatening whatever survival thing, then sure, I would absolutely do it. Are there better ways? I think so. But I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something from this video because I sure did, knowing that you can make a filter out of a piece of wood. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you enjoyed everything. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll catch y'all later, okay? Bye.